in the age of 100 meter sixes do you think it's relevant to be called the wall we should start this show then we'll have a chat about it done <laughs> So when's the first time you heard the wall? Uh I can't remember exactly the first time, but I know where it sort of came out from and where it originated. I think it it's, it probably came out uh, after one of, you know, one of my long typically maybe boring <laughs> innings, but um and I saw the headline, you know, the wall. You know, I think later on in in reflection and after going through my career, I I really thought that it was a really clever uh, it was you know some really clever boy or girl sitting on a desk in some newspaper office somewhere uh, actually looking into the future you know and 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 sort of decided okay let's name him the wall today in a really positive sense but also we could flip that around uh for our future headlines you know which could be the wall crumbles or another brick in the wall falls down as as did happen you know when i went through a bad patch later on uh, you know i i saw those headlines as well in the newspaper so so yeah i think it's someone really clever in a in a newspaper office somewhere sitting there decided you know this is a good one for the future what a strategy good tactics <laughs> <laughs> one question i always wanted to ask you why were you so serious all your cricketing career even taking stance and then that whip also you had this this expression always serious was that also a strategy and a lot of people ask me this question and and i okay i i'm not i was not the most extroverted person so you wouldn't see me dancing in the <laughs> in, in in the middle of a party but uh, and i was a, a bit of an introvert but i wasn't as serious as i think you know it came out on on the cricket field because i i think i had the tendency to give that kind of impression and and on my face it you know i was i was intense but I mean that's the seriousness that came out was 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 probably just the the, the way the expression on my face and the amount I sweated I sweated a lot and I had the I had a tendency to to sweat a lot more than than other people do and especially playing in India you know sweat dripping all across your face <laughs> and you know you're really trying to concentrate um I think it gave off that impression that I'm really serious and I don't smile and I you know I I I don't enjoy what I was doing which is actually quite the opposite i loved batting and especially when i batted i i really enjoyed batting and enjoyed batting for long periods of time but that expression helped because in 2003 when you got married before that every mother wanted you to be her son in law somewhere you gave an impression that you would make a great husband uh, so yeah, and your colleagues also tell me that you had a lot of female following uh, any interesting stories there did it disturb your concentration <laughs> <laughs> no uh yeah the female following you know i mean it kind of it, it was nice it was nice to have that female following it was nice to have that 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 kind of support um it varied as well you know after i got married uh, the same i used to get a lot of letters at valentines day in those days after i got married i got a lot of letters at rakhi so <laughs> it kind of changed changed in that context as well but uh, but yeah i mean it was it was always uh, some sometimes interesting stories with fans and and more you know from the perspective of 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 my parents and the way my parents you know when i first sort of started playing for india Uh, as as naturally happens you you get a lot of fans and people actually want to come to your house and people want to you know pick up the phone and speak to you or write letters to you and and my parents you know they uh, they really sort of genuinely believe that i must speak to every single one of my fans i should interact with them i should talk to them and and it is it would get quite tiresome for me but but you know that was the way my, my parents were and they really you know and and so if people sometimes walked into the door it was quite common for people to ring the bell and, and knock the door and say I want to speak to Rahul and my parents would call me and I'd have to go and you know speak to them <laughs> and um, and it so happened once that you know we uh, I'd come back I think from a long tour I'd just come back and and I'd gone off to sleep after sort of just reaching home in the morning and I was sleeping through the afternoon and I got up in the evening and and my um and my mom said that you know there's a, a fan waiting for you she's come all the way from Hyderabad I thought oh god I mean and and apparently she'd been waiting there for about an hour and my parents had called her in given her tea and given her coffee <laughs> and you know and 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 she was sitting just waiting for me and I said okay I thought it was going to be a, a simple autograph sort of photograph kind of thing which which is usually what happens you know it's just an autograph but um as i went there and i gave her the usual autograph photograph and said hello how are you you come from hyderabad you know it's great uh she would refuse to leave and she said no i'm not going to go and uh i said i mean what do you mean i'm not going to go she says no no i've left my house in hyderabad and i'm going to come here to stay here and i'm you know i'm not going to leave here uh i said no no how's that possible you know you go to where your parents and yeah you know, i also got a bit upset at that stage and then obviously my parents came in you know sort of realizing what's happening um 
and then eventually obviously it, it, it did get sorted out i think you know we the, the, we had to we had to sort of get the uh, get the police in and and it, oh, it, really it, yeah bad. because she did threaten not to leave and threaten <laughs> to sort of you know but uh, but they were able to contact her parents and you know it all ended ended quite well but i think it was a little bit of a wake up call to my parents as well <laughs> that you don't just let anyone into the door and and have them sit down but but it was really sweet i think in those days uh, i think there was a lot more uh it wasn't as much of i i guess the the the, the there was fan following but i think there was a i guess a certain sense of innocence about the whole thing and, and it, you know allowed a lot more interaction between players and fans wow the wall truly collapses on this one <laughs> yeah it was it, it's not an ideal yeah, ideal situation. kind of thing situation for for everyone concerned but uh, but it all ended up well so it was okay 9 out of 10 cricketers that i know don't like to read and take pride in the fact that they don't read anything <laughs> but you on every tour had a new book actually the habit of reading i mean i'll be honest is not that i grew up loving to read or it's not that i read through school a lot um i actually started reading when i when i went to college and i just met different people and and sort of made other friends and and they would talk about books and suggest a few books to me and i would read and and i would sort of you know uh, uh started enjoying reading a bit more and actually enjoyed it because i actually found that it took my mind away from the cricket because when i think i really didn't enjoy watching television that much you know i still found that when i watched television i could still think about cricket and you know i could still think about my batting uh and and but the thing with reading is if i was reading a good book or something that i enjoyed um uh, you know at least it took my mind away from thinking about cricket and the stance and the grip and who am i going to face next and you know all these thoughts that that you know how are you going to score runs all of these thoughts that sort of you know constantly at the back of your mind and it can be an irritation it can actually sap you quite a bit um so just reading i found was a really good way to sort of um you know uh take my mind off things and and yeah i mean it did raise a few eyebrows at times in some <laughs> of the books that i read and some of my teammates would look at it and you know wonder what am i doing there any example there uh one of the books i really liked reading and and it was a book actually uh, mr hanuman singh actually gave me uh the late mr hanuman singh is a fantastic coach and uh he gave me his book called the jonathan livingston seagull you know richard bach early sort of i must have been 16 or 17 then um and he he gave me this book and it was a book that really i, I think in a lot of ways i loved reading and it was a book in a, in in a ways that inspired me a lot you know that just the the quest for you know uh the seagull's quest for excellence in a lot of ways and i sort of related to that at the stage in my career i was in um and and but you know there's some of the my teammates who say yaar ye chidiya kya sikhane wale hain humko you know cricket ke bare mein kya pad rahe ho and and so it was a really thin small book so it was easy to read as well. <laughs> surprise for you we have that book for you okay. yeah which you can pass on to the next generation <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not sure how many of them are going to bother with it but yeah it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely book I, i i would recommend it to any anyone in any pursuit of excellence really but did reading actually help you in real life uh look at I, I, I think re- reading does help in the sense that it opens your eyes up to so many things and 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 so much that that you know you could uh, you, you learn about things and it's, it's it's impossible to to know the whole world and it's impossible to get everything get that much information it's only through books and through reading about things that you're able to look at situations through other people's eyes and and understand what it's like but even in my own cricketing career you know if i had to look back on certain things you know there were, there were times when i uh, read about stuff that i could improve on whether it was you know uh, things like like i said earlier i used to sweat a lot so you know i was reading about this doctor in perth who who did the, the sweat analysis thing and and how I, maybe i could use some of his research to to help my game and and help me in 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 issues i had um there was a situation where i was you know i, I read about uh, the, the south african doctor and and she you know worked with the england rugby team when they won the world world cup at that time um about exercises for the eyes and how that might help you know uh, in cricket and so it it allowed me to just explore and look at different things and actually open my eyes up to different things it, not all of the things that i read and the things that i did um helped me but there was a lot of things that i picked up which you know without reading and without just keeping an open mind to things i possibly would not have you exercise the eye uh i mean it was quite interesting it, it was just interesting a set of exercises just to just to keep your eyes fresh and just to keep them sharp and especially as you got older it probably didn't help towards the end of my career <laughs> but but it just you know it's something I, you know you can't actually say that this helps that much i mean there's no no correlation it's very difficult to judge what is helping you and what's not helping you in a lot of these things but but yeah but i think if you're someone who's who's wants to be the best he possibly can be 
then uh, you're going to try all kinds of things and I have tried some strange things to try and be good. <laughs> was this before England? You got four centuries after that? Uh, no, I wish not. I was much earlier in my career and I wish that, you know, there are a lot of things that you do and you do for a while and you're not really able to continue with them. So, uh, yeah, it was, an interest, it was interesting. I mean, it was a very interesting thing. I wish I had maybe uh, explored it a bit more as well. Talking about your cricketing friendships uh, with VVS Lakshman, you posted a photograph the other day and you talked about the fact that you had a lot of conversations with VVS, obviously while batting, but then in the slips. Yeah, you have a lot of time in the slips, you know. It's one of the things, you know, especially fielding for, for India. No disrespect to the bowlers. <laughs> but you're doing a lot of fielding. And um, and so, uh, so we're fielding a lot in the slips. And, you know, you can't always discuss cricket all the time. At times, yeah, you're discussing cricket and you're having a chat about the cricket. But there are other times when you're... Um, He's just talking about different things and you know, um, you know what's happening, uh, what's happening in the houses. We, we just happen to be constructing houses at the same time at that stage, you know. And, um, and so, yeah, so some of the conversations would be really interesting. So, um, you know, I'm having issues with the, the plumbing or the, you know, the, the electrician, which kind of electrician are using, what switches do you think we should use? <laughs> so, the, but of course, we must warn people that we would switch back on once the bowler started running and, and focus on, on, the, on, on trying to take the catches. Um, but yeah, but it's, you know, I think that's the thing about, I think, friendships and, and being with the same people for such long periods of time that, you know, you develop these friendships and you develop, um, you have, you know, conversations and you're comfortable enough to really discuss so many different things. And it's not just discussing cricket. I think we've discussed a lot about, a lot of personal stuff. Uh, and I think over the years, um, you, you, it's nice to have those kinds of sounding boards and people that you know you can speak to and discuss a lot of things. And some of them who, who've gone through the same situations that you have, you know, face the same, who are part of the same journey as you. And I think that's where you get your best insights from. Uh, your wife always said that the crankiest Rahul Dravid would get when he dropped a catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I think it was the most. Uh, I think that nothing gave me more disappointment than dropping a catch on a cricket field. I think because you know you just felt that you let somebody down, especially if he's been bowling in a hot day for a long time, and you put down the one chance that comes <laughs> and you put it down. So, so I always made an effort to work really hard on my slip catching and and ensure that you know uh, ensure that I gave myself the best chance to take every single catch that came my way. But it, it was always disappointing to drop a catch. Your wife Vijita also mentions the fact that uh, before a test match, test match starts tomorrow, that night you don't do anything that will disturb Rahul Dravid. Just leave him alone. He meditates and all of that. What is this deep intensity? <laughs> no, was, it, it's just that I started becoming quieter. There's no doubt that people would notice. And I would notice it myself. But, you know, people around me, like Vijita and stuff, would just notice it. And sometimes just... And, and they would tell me about it. And I would, I would, I would always say, no, 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 <laughs> nothing like that. But then they would sort of show it, you know, I mean, later on, when I, when it started happening, they would say, see? And, and you know, I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it's just a natural, I guess... An anticipation of the game that's coming on and so you just maybe got a bit quieter you just you know sort of got more into your own thoughts rather than you, you sort of became a little more inward looking rather than sort of outward looking but describe your routine i mean i, I don't think i had one particular oh you don't routine. have one routine not it was not the same thing i wouldn't you know you can't because mm -hmm. you're different countries different places different things but in general yes i mean i would have certain amount of uh, you know in the sense that i would i would do certain amount of things certain things irrespective so uh, one of the things I would do is before a, a test match or even before every day's play is to just actually sit down for say half an hour or so and actually just think about the next day's play and you know what is it that uh, who am I going to play against what is the kind of bowling what are the tactics strategies what's the wicket like what are the shots I should play uh, is there anything from the last game that I've learned against these guys the kind of feels that they set to me um, so just just stuff tactical stuff around the, the game uh, I would I would just sometimes you know uh, meditate just before I slept um, just do some just relaxation exercises and then the first thing when I got up in the morning because it would you know when you get up first thing in the morning sometimes you just feel a bit tense in the lead up to the game so just maybe 10-15 minutes of that uh, and then in the rest of it I, I was generally quite flexible so it wasn't that you know, I had to eat lunch here or I had to eat dinner here I couldn't go out and you know, I think that would just vary on the, on the situation. Are you aware of the fact that hotel guests used to complain uh, people especially who were living next to your room, that weird noises would come out from Rahul Dravid's room because there was actually a net practice happening there <laughs> the night before. <laughs> no, I mean, I wasn't... Uh, I mean, you carry hey, a bat... Would you knock the ball? No, no, I, I wouldn't carry a ball with me. I'd carry a bat with me. Uh, I'd ca I like to carry the bat in my room and just sometimes just pick up the bat and get a feel of what it felt like in my hand and 
and so yeah when you're tapping the bat on the ground and sometimes you know uh, the people below you the on the floor below you and sometimes you get the odd call saying can you can you stop that <laughs> but no uh, i mean i i know i gave the impression of being and i was in, intense but you know i wasn't i wasn't like cricket occupied my mind all the time vijita said that uh, early in your marriage she thought you were sleepwalking <laughs> <laughs> no i mean it, it, the thing is that when you always sort of you get up and sometimes you, you can't get sleep so you just you know swinging the bat or you're just you know you you you're sort of practicing a drill something i think that's a lot of batsmen will do that they'll they'll sort of and and you're taught that as a youngster is to just drill your technique in in front of a mirror so you you know you're practicing your sort of you shadow practicing so to speak we call it shadow practicing in in front of the mirror and it just becomes a habit it's it's almost a it's a comfort feeling i think it's just a little bit of a comfort feeling when you feel nervous and stuff you pick up your bat and shadow practice and imagine yourself smashing the bowlers all over <laughs> mane kaka tells a story that somebody complained that uh, there's a lot of noise coming out of rahul dravid's room so they went back and said uh, sorry on b- your behalf and when they found out that it was rahul dravid's room they came and apologized because they didn't want to go down in history saying that we disturbed rahul dravid and india lost the match <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank whoever they are thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> How come nobody talks anything negative about you? Even your social media page, no negative comments. It's unprecedented. How does this happen? Even under 19 World Cup when you lost when you were the coach, there was a statement which said that World Cup does not deserve Rahul Dravid. <laughs> I would have liked the World Cup. <laughs> no. Uh I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Just been a good guy, I think. <laughs> Try to be one. <laughs> But something you must be doing right. Non-controversial is a good strategy. I don't try to be it. I mean, I just, I just try and be who I am. I mean, I think that that's a, there's no strategy to it. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm not sitting there and thinking, you know, this is the kind of strategy. <laughs> this is who I, and this is what I want my social page to look like. I'm not really following it either. But uh, no, there's no strategy. I just try and be who I am. And I mean, I have had my share of controversies. You can't go through a career of as long as I have without having some controversy or the other, or, or having, you know, being in the news for the wrong reasons or getting a few things wrong. Or, you know blowing up a few times so it, it happens to the to the best of us it happens to all of us so no actually i haven't really tried to do anything different a uh, good guy but still the aussie slash do right at times <laughs> at times but not as much as i think i think they they get a bad rep at least in my opinion for 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 no real reason because at least a lot of times i i i think you know uh, i get asked this question oh the aussies must sledge a lot but honestly not really not not really i mean i, I think if you have the quality of a glen megra or a chain one i don't think <laughs> you don't need to be you don't need you don't need to sledge too much you know they're such good bowlers so uh no i, I really enjoyed playing them i think it was some great contests and some great uh, you know great great rivalries we played some great matches against you know they were the best cricket team in the world in my generation um at that point of time and they were an incredible side uh and and we competed well with them in a lot of series and in a lot of games uh and i think that's you know i think that's one that's 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 what you want you want is that as a player you know you want those contests i saw a clip yesterday while i was doing some research and i found out a nice banter between you and mitchell johnson in an ipl game mm. where you were giving it back to him and that was such a pleasure to watch <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it was probably later on in my IPL career when I said enough. I'm not handling any more. So <laughs> give it back now. <laughs> But uh, Steve Waugh never gave compliments easily. Always like rough. Steve Waugh comes to you and says, "Write the foreword of my autobiography." How's that? Uh, look, I I really enjoyed doing that, and I think it it was uh, Steve Waugh was someone I grew up admiring because again someone who I. Uh, I looked at as as someone who not had everything easy, not had it smooth, but had really fought back and you know, become a really really consistent player and played some incredible knocks under pressure. So, uh, so someone I looked up to, and so then to be asked to write the foreword of his book, I, I thought was a was a really nice thing, was a really nice nice honor. Um, and and someone I I got along really well with through you know and in the in the, in the few interactions that I've had through throughout the throughout our careers. Did you guys sledge Steve Waugh ever? He was actually one of those guys where you actually didn't want to sledge him too much because he he revelled in it. You know he was one of those guys who almost looked for a fight and and he was and and if and if you didn't sledge him uh, to motivate him he he would sometimes you know sledge you while he was batting so that <laughs> you know to, to to get himself going you almost got that impression. I, I remember this this game in in, in Madras when uh, we walked in and we decided in that 2001 series we're not going to say anything to Steve Waugh because if he if he, you know he uh, uh, he loves it and he enjoys it so let's not say anything to him and let's just keep really quiet and 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 you know uh, let's see how he reacts to that and. And sure enough, he walked into bat, and um, there was just silence, and nobody was saying anything. And maybe the odd "come on, Bajji," or you know, uh, I think Nilesh was playing in that game. Uh, and and we were, 
So he's not saying nothing to him and I think after about 10-15 minutes he got so frustrated I think he turned around to the wicketkeeper and said aren't any of you going to say something to me? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I think there were guys, certain guys who just wanted to lay off and Steve Waugh was one of them. So a show is what the duck? What is your favourite or worst duck that you remember? Uh, I've got a worst one. Uh, inter-school final. Um, an inter-school final in Bangalore is a, is, is a pretty big thing, uh, and and it's at the Katon and Shield, and you know you have uh, you have a lot of the sort of boys from the school come to watch. It's quite a big it's a it's quite a big uh, sort of final big event of the calendar, and so it was a big event to play, and I was really excited about playing this sort of inter-school final, and um, I got run out for a duck. I think <laughs> I played one ball, and then in the second ball I, I I think got I got run out for duck, and and I remember sort of crying all the way back to the pavilion. <laughs> Um, not a great thing to do in front of your whole school. <laughs> so you get reminded about it a lot. So, yeah, it was one of those early ducks of mine. I was so excited and so keen to do well in that that big game that you know getting run out was just uh, the, probably the last straw. And um, and yeah, so that's a, that's the worst one. One I remember. Yeah, it's so many years ago, I still remember. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, Prahul, we have something very interesting for you here. This is a jersey for you. Dravid Twenty One. What's the These are the number of ducks you've scored in your life. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for reminding me. I'll wear that with pride. <laughs> Thanks. Rahul Dravid always had a very serious expression. Even when he came into bat, you got an impression that Nirupa Roy was coming into bat. Where is Rahul? The other guy who was very serious was Jacques Callis. Gap in his teeth, very oldish look. <laughs> Come to think of it, Callis looked old throughout his career. I think Callis and AK Hangal are two entities who were never young in their life. But the funniest dance award goes to Shiv Narayan Chandrapal. He completely confused the audience. Here is Chandrapal. Many times I used to get worried that he will be given one day LBW by the leg umpire. I hope you like the show. My favorite moment with Dravid is the banter he had with BBS Lakshman in the slips. <laughs>